all uh, today i'm going to talk about a poem you know english literature it's uh, under the topic of war uh, war is kind uh, it was written by the most famous uh, american writer stephen crean uh, who was um, who was the first hand war reporter as well uh, what is the guide by Stephen Crane indicates the psychological uh, term, uh, term uh, which the dying soldiers and their uh, loving ones are doing instead of focusing on the glory and the heroic attitude and the romanticism heroic attitude in the battlefield. And here Stephen Crane becomes fascinated with issues of the uh, century which faces the uh, faces their uh, cruel fate in the battlefield where they believe that it has a glory to die in that place. And this poem was published in 1899, less than the year before the Stephen Crane died. So we can tell that it's the poem which belongs to the uh, late 19th century and the early 20th century. Uh, Stephen Crane was born in America. And uh, as I told you earlier, he had a first-hand experience in the war, which make him much more uh which gives him much more knowledge about the war and which encourages him to uh, write the poem about the war and uh, the, his most famous uh, novel which won many prizes according uh, related to the war field is the name the red patch of courage uh, which is also relevant to the theme the theme like this uh, similar to this novel and as a reporter in civil war uh, he has seen many soldiers their un unhealthy conditions in the trenches and their yeah. uh, pains and their loving ones' pains when they lost their memories and lost them. So, as a as a memory and as a lesson, um, here the Stephen Crane uh, uh, create this wonderful art to his readers. And here we can understand that uh, through this poem, uh, we can understand the reality of many wars because many people think that dying for the country is a uh, very very honor thing and it's a uh, it's uh, what it's, it's such an honor to die for the country but uh according to the poem and according to the reality we can understand that uh the dying for the country is not uh not that much glory and uh, it also it uh, only gives pain and it only leaves us with uh, sad memories so here we can understand that this poem speaks the reality of the cruel war. Uh, but um, here when we focus on the each and every soldier's life, we can understand their pains and their loving one's pains because uh, uh, in among the soldier's pain, we can view, we can focus uh, the uh, loving one's pains as most most uh, uh, sorrowful thing. So we can suggest that the title of the poem is uh, somewhat ironical and paradoxical. Uh, when we move to the first stanza, we can understand that the writer addresses the maiden who suggests us as an unmarried woman who loved the soldier who died in the battlefield. Uh, battlefield is a place uh, we can we know that where uh, many people lost their loving ones and lost their uh, precious lives and here the image of the dying soldier the th pain of the person who is connected with the uh, uh, connected with those people are clearly portrayed in the first line uh, in the first line uh, the writer addresses the a rudderless horse which comes alone to the home uh, without the soldier or the, without the hero or hero without its hero here we can understand that in war there's no helps and the most innocent souls are also uh, taken and consumed by the cruel war uh, so we can understand that the war can't be an option to get the uh, get our needs in uh, get our needs War is not about, we all know, the most famous quote says that war is not about who is right, but it only about who is left. And uh, the ironical tone of this poem, uh, even the first answer, uh, we can understand that uh, the ironical tone of the poem also uh, sarcastically telling about the reality of the reality of the poem because uh, when we see it in an outwardly manner we can understand that uh, many people think that uh, dying for the country what a what a big thing and what a honor thing to do that and it also gives the glory to them but uh, here uh, the writer focuses on the people 
uh, who lost their loving ones and um, before in front of their loving ones pain uh, dying for their country or dying for the dying for any need is not that's my correct to uh, die for the country so we can understand that the war can't be an option to do this um, uh, option to get our needs it also uh, it always leaves with sadful memories with uh, for our loving ones and here the writer uh, the ironical tone do not weep maiden uh, indicates the poet wants to encourage the unmarried woman about her great loss of life but we all know that the pain of the maiden was uncurable. So we can conclude that uh, boss gives an unbearable uh, pain in our lives. Because we all know, uh, here in this first answer, the maiden uh, who has a bright, who has to have uh, a bright future lost her, lost her loving ones. And uh, so uh, um, since this incident, uh, she has to, uh, face a cruel fate and she has to uh, live in the darkness because uh, she lost her identity and she lost her loving one in that war uh, so it's a very painful uh, thing to tell and the other stanza the great battle god is referred to the mars the god of war in the roman mythology uh, by saying that these men were born to drill and die and the little souls uh, the speaker and once draws the attention of the soldiers and he, attention of the readers about, about the pain of the soldiers. And here the poet draws the image of the soldiers as a robot uh, who is programmed to do the things, uh, programmed to do the things. Here the soldiers' feelings are caged. Uh, the emotions of the soldiers are limited and insulted by the people who, who uh, used them as slaves. Um, the soldiers are viewed, uh, viewed as um, an animated objects before them and uh, they ordered and they fulfilled their needs through the, through that poor souls. Here the soldiers' feelings are also caged and the sound of the loud drums indicates the harshness of the a battlefield and alerts the readers to give the curiosity to the poem because we all know that the drums the uh, loudness of the drums are the symbol of the battlefield and here we can understand that uh, the poet somewhat used this uh, uh, drums uh, in the purpose to uh, draw the situation draw the situation lively in the uh, minds of the readers and again, these men were born to drill and die. It's a repetition indicates the soldiers are facing their death faster than the ordinary people in the world because uh, every people in this world are born to be succeed in their life and born to be get something, uh, born, uh, are born to attain something very special and something very close to their heart. But uh, soldiers don't have uh, that much needs. They always have to do their works for their country and here as it, as the, as it mentioned their only thing is to drill and die they are like the programmed soldiers uh programmed robots and their works are limited in that situation and the soldier's birth is only to die for his country uh and this uh, thing is uh uh i think is illustrated by this stanza and the third stanza is similar to the same type of intimate setting as the first stanza. In it, the speaker asks a baby not to cry, mirroring, uh, mirroring the request of the uh, poem's opening line. We all, uh, when we see the first stanza, as I told you earlier, in the first stanza also the poet uh, is um, requesting the maiden not to cry as a... Um, as if pleading and here also in the third stanza it's similar to the first stanza the poet is telling that the baby not to cry mirroring the request of the poem's opening line after telling that uh, uh, the baby's father uh, died violently in the jello trench the speaker ironically uh, states that the war is not kind because um, here we, we can understand that the uh, baby uh, in his very early age, lost his emotional support as she lost, uh, she he lost uh, his father uh, in the war, 
as the color yellow is often associated with the sickness, we can uh, understand that the poet also try to use the color imagery to uh, give the unhealthy condition of the soldiers in the battlefield and in the trenches. Uh, it told, it, it also says that in America, in the uh, during the war period, uh, many people uh, died because because of the yellow fever uh, in the unhealthy trenches. Where the poet also suspected when the when we read the history of the poet, we also know that the poet also suspected with the yellow fever in the unhealthy trenches, as he, she he's also the first hand war reporter. And here we can understand that uh, uh, when in when we uh, see the first tensa, uh, the maiden's uh, lover threw the wild hands towards the sky, and he did, he also died in the battlefield. And in the third tensa, the baby's father, whom uh, whom who is the big support for the uh, baby, also died. So we can understand that the war hits. Uh, uh war hits um every people without any different without any caste without any uh, uh without any age limits so every people in that in a, every innocent people uh, who are living in that war area are the victims not only the soldiers but also their loving ones are also the victims of the war who are uh who are who are experiencing the cruel fate uh uh, sin, uh, 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 since the loss of their loving ones as well. The soldiers' plights are well portrayed through this uh, through these stanzas. At the same time, we can tell that the war not only give the grief to the people who are involving in the battlefield, but also give the sorrow to the people who are off to the battlefield. Here, we can understand that uh, um, the effect of the uh, poem is given by those people who are journeying, journeying to connect with their loving ones and lost their loving ones. So uh, we can understand that this poem is emotionally built up by the uh, poet to uh, poet to give more understanding about the poem. And uh, and uh, when when it comes to the struggles and sorrows of the people, it also um, uh, there are there are many people who get um, who face many uh, sorrowful situations in the war uh, as well. The fourth sense return us to the heart of the battlefield uh, where the flag blazes. Um, then the poet states that uh, in the repetition word that these men were drilled to die, uh, these men were born to drill and die, which is the repetition indicates the uh, cruelty of the war uh, which caused the soldiers as victims. In this stanza, the flag can be seen, uh, can be represent the society where the war, uh, war seen, uh, war has been seen as a glorified one, and uh, the authority of people who are uh, who wants the war uses the innocent uh, souls as soldiers and uh, take the uh, take the benefits from them and living and uh, creating the fake illusion like that the war is very uh, uh, honor thing to do and dying for the country is very honor but as a reporter as a first hand reporter uh, here uh, the writer stephen crane boldly focuses on the reality of the war and give the uh, creates this poem as a literary artwork who always ignores the war while the previous tenses have been focused on the brutal brutality of the war, and the first tense points out the cruel cruelty and indifference of the society that knowingly sends its junk men to die and kill others. We all know that in the uh, uh, in the war field, the most of the soldiers are in young age. It projects that the, some people are in favor to the war, and some people can't understand the cruelty of the war because of such people. Uh, moreover, we all know that uh, as the young people are mostly sent to the battlefield, uh, the, um, any country that do the war for the peace lost pe uh, lost the peace and uh, its future lights in the battlefield. And it ironically suggests that war only gives us sorrow. 
unless we don't have any experience in the war zone, uh, we can't realize the unseen true faces of the people uh, who are convincing the youngsters by telling that war is a very kind thing and war, uh, doing war for the country is a very honored thing to do. But um, after reading this uh, poem, uh, we surely get a clear understanding about the real situation of the war and how the people are uh, mind washed and sent uh, sent to the war uh, sent to the war and uh, there are many alternatives we we also we know that uh, many people think that uh, we can't get any peace or we can't uh, fulfill or achieve our needs uh, without war but we all we know that uh, there are many alternatives way to get peace but when the country do battles uh, to get peace it can't be the right option to get peace it only leads us to the world of darkness and put the people put the country in the ditch and economically bankrupt uh, the poem's fifth and the utmost final stanza reverts back to the intimate setting of the first stanza and the third stanza uh, the speaker implores the mother whose heart is uh, humble as a button not to weep here the comparison of the mother's love uh, to the something as insignificant as a button on the uniform represents the way which the war treats the people and ignores the experiences and the great loss of the individuals and their pains of the soldiers loving ones because here uh, the heart uh, which was full of the weight of the emotions and the uh, feelings are viewed as an insignificant button in the uh, uniforms and here uh, through this we can understand that even though many people are looking the war as a very glorifical thing and very romantical thing uh, for the for the authority or for the people uh, who are uh, tr knowingly send the soldiers for the battlefield, they view uh, view this uh, kind of pains of the people and these things as a insignificant thing. And here, uh, the reality also uh, brought through this poem, as the poet suggests that the uh, mother's heart, who is uh, captured, who's uh, which is captured by the unbearable pains, are uh, only focused as a uh, insignificant button in the uniforms. Uh, here, the soldiers and their loving human sacrifices are thrown and destroyed, and this harsh truth was amazingly revealed through this final stand, final and the fifth stanza. The maiden, uh, the baby, and the mother are all met with the same phrase: "Do not weep; that war is kind." Even the structure of the poem is ironically show the. Uh, uh, contradictions in the society's view of the war and they are strongly their beliefs in the war proved the war as a cruel thing. Uh, the famous quote says that war is a symptom of a man as a thinking animal and war is a game played with a, a smile in the face but there won't be the laughter in the heart because uh, according to the whole poem we can understand that uh, even though the soldiers uh, knowingly sent to the battlefield and uh, they believe that the war gives uh, glory to them. In the end, they are the victims of the war and their loving ones are spending their rest of the life uh, by tears unrolled in the cheeks and in their cheeks and uh, they are uh, they are sorrowfully living with their uh, sorrowful memories of their loving ones who died in the battlefield. And we all know that in the war there are no unwanted soldiers because every soldiers have to uh, have to face their cruel fate. Uh, even even they didn't die in the battlefield, they even get the wounds uh, in the battlefield. So um, as the repetition says, these men were born to drill and die. Uh, the soldiers are uh, respected as an uh, animal or the robots in that battlefield because they are only used for the purpose and they are reason in the for the the reason of the birth is to uh, face these such uh, face such a problems in their lives and face these cruel fates in their life. The reason for the for their birth is like that and f for them uh, they have to 
drill they have to do the things in the they have to do the mud trainings and other trainings and going to the battlefield and they are in the battlefield uh, they have to face their cruel fates their life is like this circle uh, but ordinary uh, humans who are living in other parts and out of the um, out of the war zone uh, uh, have not uh, never get the chance to understand or realize the plights of the soldiers so I think this poem in English literature uh, really helps us to understand the uh, situation, the real situation, the reality of the war fit. The ironical theme was highly portrayed in the poem. The war is kind of, uh, uh, and war is not kind, but it's a hell even in the disaster times. We all know that uh, when many people are affected uh, by the disasters, uh, we can many uh, we can get many humanity services. Uh, but in the war zone, the humanity was caged. People in the war ignores other people, and they looked as they uh, looked another as the another human as a victim of the war and their enemy enemy of the war. So we can tell that the war is the biggest mistake of the human beings. We may think that uh, war can help the people uh, in our country and build up the uh, country's, uh, country's strength. But we all know that when we do the battles, battles again and again, uh, our country will go into the ditch and it will also face the economical bankrupt. So war can't be an option to get our needs or fulfill our dreams. But war is a unkind thing which, you which is useless and it takes both side lives because when we do the war it don't it not only takes the people who are wrong's life the people who are right and the who are wrong uh, where when they commit uh, do that war uh, there are two two of them lives also uh, will also lost in the war field so uh, was a very bad thing uh, which is uh, suggested by the poet ironically even though uh, during the war time, soldiers sacrifices their life and they didn't get enough glory as well because uh, according to the poem, we can understand that many soldiers have uh, faced many uh, fate, cruel fates in their life, but uh, they are not uh, treated that much glorified or they are not romanticized as uh, war heroes after their death. Only they have they has to face their fate and they are loving ones have to uh, uh, have to end up their lives in a very uh, sorrowful manner. Uh, so uh, this poem makes uh, us question the integrity of more widely accepted narrative about the war that there is glory in battle that is uh, virtuous to fight. The speaker calls. Uh, the unexplained glory flies above the uh, soldiers marching uh, marching to their deaths to the battlefield because the soldiers marching uh, towards the war field is glorified as the um, it suggests that they are walking to the uh, death uh, their own death it indirectly points to the speaker's belief it cannot be explained because there is nothing rational about man uh, of fighting and dying for a symbol but uh, in the uh, as the uh, as people in the young age, uh, uh, some people feel that because of the societal beliefs and societal expectations, many people uh, think that uh, being as a soldier in the war is a very glorified thing and is romanticizing, and they feel them as a hero and went to the war. But uh, after we read the poem, we can understand the reality of the poem because. Uh, War is not a glorified thing. It only gives a dark fate to the a human and many people. And here we can understand that this poem helps us to understand this thing. And when we a, when we focus on the poem's uh, narrative format, uh, the poet comes as a lecturer who narrates the poem in a second person point of view. And in the irregular rhyming pattern of this poem, uh, which cre uh, created the effect of the war, uh, which is very cruel and harsh, the poem starts with a tone of irony, and there are many metaphors as well to uh, give the literal value and uh, add more war effects to the poem. The field where thousand corpses lie comes as a hyperbole, which draws the harshness of the war because. 
uh, through this uh, we can understand we can imagine that the uh, uh, imagine that how can the ball field be like because uh, the the ball field where the thousand corpses lies and uh, we can understand that it's a, even though uh, the poet used it as a hyperbole we can imagine the cruelty of the world through this uh, uh, through this technique the poet wants to uh, up the cruelty of the world and make us to understand the real situation of the world the battle god is an illusion which indicates the greek god of the world drilled and uh, die and it comes as an alliteration as well humble as the button comes as a simile because the has is used so we can understand that it's as a simile and here uh it purpose of this uh, simile is to uh, understand that how the war and the war field viewed the pain of the loving ones as an insignificant thing. Moreover, the poem is very rich in the visual imagery, which uh, which is very helpful for the readers to feel the real uh, field, the real war field, and get the real experience uh, of the war. And the plights of the dying soldiers, when we talk about the plight of the dying soldiers and their family in the major theme, uh, which is depicted in those lines in the poem uh, by emphasizing that the soldiers are made for dying and thrilling, but can understand their sorrowful life, which is not like an ordinary human. Asking readers once again to consider the absurdity of the war, the poet wants to highlight the theme that war is not, re uh, war is not an option. In conclusion, uh, war is not kind depicts uh, death being a possibility of the advantages uh, for the authority people who use the innocent and less, less authority people as the victims to uh, fulfill their needs in a political or other manner. And uh, by killing and leaving the loved ones in their poem is a big point which highlights just the grief uh, and carries the feelings of the loving ones. And here the narrat narrator attempts trying to justify the kindness of the war only to uh, and signifies their selves. And we can understand, even though the poet also used that do not weep, uh, we can understand that he sarcastically used in this purpose to, uh, purpose to uh, purpose to understand the real uh, purpose as to make understand the real situation of the war so we can understand that the war is uh, war is kind is a poem uh, which is very realistical about the war situation which was written by the uh, first hand reporter of the war field uh, thank you for listening